In science fiction, one of the most powerful, widely seen tools in battle is the force field. We've all seen them. A transparent, paper-thin, yet impenetrable field that can be shaped and morphed into practically anything. So with all the money that the military spends on making new and advanced weapons, you'd think they would invest in something as powerful as a force field. So why don't they exist? Are they physically possible? Well, if you're going to make a force field, you need a force. Right now, there are four known forces of the universe. Gravity, the electromagnetic force, and the strong and weak nuclear forces. But could any of them be used to make a force field? First, let's look at gravity. The reliable force that keeps us from flying off the Earth, that holds the solar system and the galaxy together. Could we somehow mold gravity into a force field? Well, gravity kind of has the exact opposite properties of a force field. A force field needs to repel things, be ridiculously strong so that nothing can penetrate it, and be focused into a thin plane. Gravity is an attractive force, and a pretty weak one at that. The gravity of an entire planet is counteracted every time you pick up a pencil. It also works over large distances and isn't easy to manipulate, especially into a thin plane. So there's not much hope of making gravity a force field. Next, there's the electromagnetic force. You know, the one that powers your PlayStation and lets you watch cat videos. It's a bit of a better option than gravity, but not by far. It can be repulsive, which is what you would want in a force field, so it's got that going for it. But it's completely useless against any insulating material like rubber or plastic. Also, like gravity, it can't really be focused into a thin plane. So sorry electromagnetic field, you can't be a force field either. The last two forces are the strong and weak nuclear forces. The weak force is the force of radioactive decay. It heats up the Earth's core and is responsible for volcanoes, earthquakes and continental drift. The strong force holds the nucleus of atoms together. It gives energy to the sun and stars, effectively lighting up the entire universe. So could either of these make a good force field? Well, the problem is that both nuclear forces are too short-ranged. They act over only a few nuclei, which makes them extremely difficult to manipulate. In fact, the only way scientists have of manipulating them are to blow subatomic particles up in atom smashers or to detonate atomic bombs. So unfortunately, they won't work as force fields either. So if none of the forces could work as force fields, does that mean they are impossible? The laws of physics simply won't allow it? Well, not quite. Scientists have another lead. The fourth state of matter. The first three states of matter are gases, liquids, and solids. And the fourth is something called plasma. We're not too familiar with plasma because it's not very abundant on Earth, but it's actually the most common form of visible matter in the universe making up the sun, the stars, and interstellar gas. But what is it? When you heat up a gas to extremely high temperatures, the electrons are torn away from their mother nucleus because of all the extra energy they get from the heat. Because the gas particles have lost electrons, they become positively charged. This new type of gas, where the electrons are free and the particles are charged, is called plasma. Because of all the charged particles, plasma can be influenced by an electromagnetic field even being shaped into a thin plane, or what's known as a plasma window. Plasma windows are currently used to weld metal using electron beams as they can separate vacuum from air. They may not be force fields in the traditional sense as they're not made of force, but they mimic the properties of a force field pretty well. We've already mentioned that they can be manipulated, so we could make any shape we wanted with a strong and intricate enough electromagnetic field. They can separate air from vacuum, which means that, in theory, we could have a spaceship made entirely out of plasma. And importantly, when plasma is heated to extremely high temperatures, it becomes what's known as impermeable plasma. It becomes very thick and matter has trouble passing through it. An impermeable, paper-thin, easily manipulated substance? This sounds like a pretty good imitation force field. So why aren't we using them? 
Well, plasma only becomes impermeable at extremely high temperatures. I'm talking hotter than the surface of the sun temperatures. We have the technology to reach these temperatures, just not without using a huge amount of energy. So plasma windows are usually only about three feet high and one foot wide. However, as technology improves, it's not difficult to imagine bigger and stronger plasma windows in the future. But can a plasma window alone ever really be enough to withstand cannonballs, bullets and laser beams? In science fiction, force fields are practically indestructible. Could a plasma window ever really be indestructible? World-famous physicist Michio Kaku thinks that plasma windows on their own may not be enough to live up to the great expectation of force fields in science fiction, but stacking on a couple layers of other stuff might do the trick. He imagines that if we ever did have force field type things, the top layer would be a supercharged plasma window, hot enough to vaporize metal. The second layer would be a flat web of high energy laser beams, vaporizing anything that made it through the plasma window. And the third layer would be a sheet of carbon nanotubes, only one atom thick, but 100 times stronger than steel. At the moment, carbon nanotubes are only a few millimeters long, but Kaku expects that this will change as technology improves over the years, and we'll be able to make sheets of any length we like. This combination of plasma, lasers, and carbon nanotubes would truly be impenetrable to most forms of matter. But yes, there's still a but. None of these layers would be any use against a laser beam. Being transparent and stopping light going through you don't really go hand in hand. Unless... One way this multi-layered shield could stop a laser is if one of the layers became partially opaque upon sensing sufficient light intensity. This technology kind of already exists. It's called photochromatics. You know those glasses that look like regular glasses, but then when they're exposed to sunlight, they turn into sunglasses? That happens because there are molecules in the lenses that can exist in two states. In one state, the molecule is transparent, but when exposed to sunlight, it changes to its opaque state, blocking out the sun's rays. However, at the moment, photochromatics that can stop a laser beam don't exist. Right now, the technology just isn't there to do justice to the impressive force fields we see in the movies. But Michio Kaku classifies force fields as a type 1 impossibility. That is, impossible by today's technology, but achievable, he thinks, within the next 100 years or so. Of course, this is just one theory, and it's very difficult to make predictions about the future. There are obviously a lot of kinks to work out. For example, if plasma becomes really thick, won't it become opaque? And some of the things mentioned in this video may be discovered to be impossible. But they haven't yet. So what do you think? Force fields. Possible or impossible? Thanks for watching guys, this video was based on a chapter of the book Physics of the Impossible by Michio Kaku. I've linked it in the description below along with any other sources I've used. If you liked this video, make sure to like this video and subscribe for more physics and sometimes math. Bye!